fish in about 25 years in Virginia, and it's unlike anything I've ever experienced anywhere else. It's just more interactive. Um, I like to be, feel like I'm more involved with the environment and what I'm doing, and with fly fishing, you're always moving, you're always trying to problem solve or figure out what you need to do to catch a fish. It's something that um, can be very relaxing. It is a way, perhaps, to lower stress. We have lots of people who love to come to do fishing during all sorts of times of year. Our uh, trout zone, many people have built handicapped fishing places where people with a wheelchair can wheel right down to the stream and be able to fish. It's just a wonderful situation for them. And I've caught a lot of fish. What I really enjoy doing is getting someone on the water who hasn't fly fished and helping them become a better angler, watching them catch fish and seeing their excitement. One thing about Virginia is we have, there's no open or closed season really for what we do, but it is very diverse. You can catch trout, certain, well, year round if you want, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass. The musky fishing is phenomenal. We have saltwater opportunities uh, out in the Chesapeake Bay, which are great. Have landlocked stripers. It's just the diversity of Virginia is absolutely amazing for its fishery. Although I work full-time in the fly fishing community now, I'm a retired Fairfax County firefighter and paramedic, and I spent 30 years serving in Fairfax County. <clears throat> and I got involved in fly fishing because I just needed to, to get away from what I saw at work. Um, I ran a rescue call with a guy named Bob Guess, who at the time, I didn't know this, was probably one of the most famous fly fishermen in the country certainly for bass fishing in Virginia or in the south. And uh, I'm the paramedic that showed up to take care of him while he was having some difficulty breathing one day. And at the time, I was about 25, and he was about 75. And he squinched his eyes up and he said, son, i got a question. I said, okay, he said, do you golf? I said, no, no, sir, I don't golf. He said, good, son, because you can't afford to golf and fly fish. And he said, if you're interested in learning, I'll teach you. Here's my phone number. Give me a call in a couple of days. And I thought it was kind of strange, but the more I thought about it, he was the only flying where I knew. And I wanted to learn, so I called him up. One summer, uh, a girl I was dating, we broke up. And then I was, you know, it was kind of, uh, I was a little bit mad. I said, how oh, the heck with that? Gonna, you know, heck with women for a while. I'm going to just go, uh, go learn to fly fish. And so I went and bought a better rod and uh, a little bit better uh, uh, waders and uh, started uh, fly fishing. And uh, that's kind of what sparked me to work at it and become proficient at it versus, you know, just throwing a line out there occasionally. I caught my first bluegill at, uh, in Fairfax County on Brook Lake uh, in the late 80s, and I was just, I was like, wow, I, I've never seen anything like that, never felt anything like that, where the fish actually comes up and hits the fly on the surface and took off, and it was just like, it was like I was holding lightning on the line, you know, it was really feel connected to the fish. My 16 years of living in Virginia, I have definitely noticed changes in the Rapidan, uh, in the Conway River, on just about all of our waters, whether it's trout streams or smallmouth streams, the James, the Shenandoah, climate change, and, uh, things going on. Definitely one of the first things it affects is, is water temperature and water quality. And all the species in Virginia all need a very certain range of water quality and temperature. 
would have a huge impact. For trout, they need uh, cold, clear water. Uh, as all fish, you know, good supply of food, and it's got to have the right pH in the stream too, or else they won't survive. Our development all around in the air, near close to the urban ring, all that material gets into the water supply eventually. It's not all taken up by the place where it's put especially Roundup and things like that, are just so dangerous that they get impacted, the components of them get impacted into the soil and then travel with the rainwater. If things keep going, population keeps going, and cities keep growing the way that they are, jamming so many people into these places, yeah, it's more cars on the river, it's more factories being built, it's more pollution going into the air. I, it's going to have, I mean, I... I'm really concerned for my children and grandchildren of what their fishery is going to be. It's not just our freshwaters, it's not just our mountains. Oceans are really taking a hit because all these rivers are tributaries to oceans and they're flowing into there so all the pollutants that we put into the rivers go to the oceans. Oceans are having a very hard time as well. So what the fishery is going to be I mean, if you consider 30, 40, 50 years in the near future, I have very high concerns for it. It's, we're not on a good path. These are, this is reality. It's what I've noticed with my own eyeballs. And it's sad and we something we need to pay attention to because as these littlest creatures in our food chain are impacted, so will everything else be. The biggest challenge to every angler in the country is the same. It's exactly the same. It's not money. I would encourage people to get involved with their local conservation groups and team up with landowners to help plant more trees, uh, do more to connect uh, impaired fisheries to culverts, and reconnect and repair the, the water that we have. We're not going to get any new rivers, so we need to take care of the ones that we have. And we do that by starting at home. So I